I've been doing some training on event listeners lately, so I've decided to discuss what I think is a poorly understood feature of Add Event Listener. That is the Use Capture parameter that affects event propagation. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe, and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. And the description also has a link to Patreon if you would like to support this channel and get access to the code files. There's also a link to EarnScript. Now, event propagation is a term used to talk about how events are handled in JavaScript and web pages. This encompasses event bubbling and event capturing. I've talked about these concepts in another tutorial, which I will link to in the description. But in this tutorial, I want to talk about what is considered the third parameter when setting up an event listener. This parameter is usually referred to as the use capture parameter. Now, if we take a look at the W3 Schools web page on Add Event Listener, and we scroll down here to where it talks about each of the parameters, you can see the event. We pass in the event. We pass in the function that will be invoked when the event occurs. And then there is a third parameter, use capture. And this is a Boolean, and this is optional. When it is not included, it defaults to false, as you can see here. And basically what it says is the event handler is executed in the bubbling phase. If it's true, the event handler is executed in the capturing phase. Well, most people read that and they have no idea what that means. What, what's the difference between capturing phase and bubbling phase? The best way to really illustrate that is, like always, to look at some examples. So for these examples, I'm going to use the, this web page here, but I've added to it. Let me just take a look at that code. I have here another div, and inside that div, a button that I'm going to remove the comment from, save that, and so it will now look like this. So we have this button down here below. Now, going back to the HTML page, notice the button is inside of a div with a class of center. The button has an ID of button, and that is inside of a div called content main, which is then inside the body tag. All right. Now, I have a bunch of event listeners set up. As you can see, I have several of them. I've attached one to the button. I grabbed that using get element by ID. To the div that's right above that, that one I used query selector, and I grabbed it using the class, the CSS class that was assigned to it. And then content main, the div above that I grab, and then document and window. So I have five event listeners here. They're all using the click event. And then you just log something to the console. Now, as you can see, I've included the third parameter, but I've set it to false, which is the default anyway. So this is what this is how an event listener would normally act that's added with add event listener, and this third parameter is not used. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me open up the console first before I do, and then I'll scroll down to that button. Now, if I click the button, notice we get five console log statements. And notice the order they come in. The click is handled by the button, the click is handled by center div, then content main div, then the document, and then the window. So this is event bubbling. The event is bubbling up through the ancestry of that button. So it hits the button first, and then the div that contains that button, and then the div that contains that div, and then the document, and then the window. Okay. So we could actually respond to that click event on any one of these elements. It's possible to do that. We could respond to it, as I've done here, on all of them. I have an event handler on every single one of them. Now. Back to the W3C schools page, it says false, default, the event handler is executed in the bubbling phase. So basically what that's meaning is that the event handler is dealt with using event bubbling, the default way that events pass through the hierarchy. 
So it starts at the target and then is passed to that parent, that parent, and so on up the hierarchy. Now, when it's set to true, the event handler is executed in the capturing phase. So let's take a look at what event capturing looks like. So here in the JavaScript file, let me select all those and change them to true. Save that. This will now illustrate the capturing phase because that's what it's going to use. It's not going to use bubbling. It's going to use event capturing. So I'm going to refresh that again. Here we have our button. If I click it, notice that it goes in reverse order. So the outermost element that has a handler captures the click event first. It's handled by window, then document, then content main, then center, and then finally the button. So that is event capturing. And that's what that third parameter controls, is it controls the order that the events are captured. Now, the reason this is not well known is because it's not used frequently. And so because it's not used frequently, people don't think about it a lot. But when the problem with that is when a problem arises that could be solved using this knowledge, it's usually dismissed because nobody knows about it, because it's not used often enough. And that's why I think it's important to understand it. Now, there's one last thing I want to illustrate here, and that is the stop propagation method of the event object. Let me just jump back in here, and I'm going to change this back to false. Now, I'm capturing the event object for all of these, as you can see. I could stop the propagation so that the event just happens to the button and nowhere else. I do that using stop propagation. That's a method on the event object, as you can see. This is going to make it so that only this console log statement displays. So if I save that, let's refresh again, now I click it. Now we just get the one by the button. Now, if we would have put this in, say, let me pull it out of here and put it down. Let's put it down here with content main. This time, we're going to get three of them to display and not the final two, not the document and window, because we stop it at content main. That's where we stop it at. So it could be stopped at any of those levels. All right, like I said, if you want more information about event propagation, I've done a tutorial on that and you can refer to it. But here we've been able to look at the third parameter in Add Event Listener and what that can do for us, how it can change the handling of the event from event bubbling to event capturing. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I try to release a new tutorial each week, and I do pretty good at that. And once again, thanks for watching.